Sussex won their second. Clydesdale banked 40 match out of two to go top of Group C. They went to Northampton and beat the Steelbacks by 12 runs as they valiantly defended a score of 180. Michael Yardy won the toss and batted first, a decision which looked to be spot on as his openers got off to a racing start thanks largely to the return of Luke Wright. He proved that he's lost none of his zest for the shortened game by going for his shots from ball one. Even without him in the last two LB County Championship matches, Sussex have scored incredibly quickly and the signs were there that this was going to be a massive score. Ed Joyce came into this match having scored a brilliant 100 on the previous day and he was clearly in top form as he worked the ball off his legs, timing his shots perfectly. Andrew Hall was launched over the long on boundary by Wright as he and his partner put on 73 in the opening nine overs of the match. It was scintillating stuff from the pair. But almost from nowhere, Sussex were pegged back by losing a host of wickets in quick succession. Having hit 23 from 20 balls, Joyce missed a reverse paddle to be bowled by James Middlebrook. Matt Machen followed in the next over, nicking Lee Daggett behind before he'd scored. And Murray Goodwin went for a three-ball duck in the same over, guiding a delivery from Daggett to David Sales. Wright ignored all of that to go to a splendid 50, made off only 45 balls, but he then lost Joe Gatting, who'd made just four when he was bowled by Conda Lang. And when Wright, on 59, drilled Middlebrook to David Willey at long on, the Sharks had slipped from 73 without loss after nine overs to 116 for five at the start of the 20th. But they kept on going. Ben Brown hit his first ball to the fence before bringing out some cheekiness as he started to ruin Middlebrook's figures a little. Brown dominated a sixth-wicket partnership with Yardy, which was worth 31 in five overs. However, when he was out for 20, bang in front while sweeping DeLang, Sussex were on 147 for six and in danger of not seeing the overs out. That looked even more possible when Will Beer lobbed the South African DeLang an easy return catch after compiling six runs. Yardy had nudged and nurdled his way to 39, an important innings, but he was then bowled off the edge by Daggett, who then had Amjad Khan LBW for two, meaning that the last two came together with eight overs still left and only 165 runs on the board. There's often amusement to be found when Monty Panasar is batting. Everybody found something to laugh about here when he broke his bat in two. On a more serious note, his and Chris Little's last wicket stand of 15 was to turn out to be absolutely crucial. The innings was ended when Panasar drove Hall to Daggett, who'd taken four for 31, as Sussex were all out for 180, with 26 balls of their innings not used up. Few would have thought that that was enough, except the Sussex players themselves. Importantly, Yardy, opening the bowling, removed the pinch hitter Willie in the third over, bowling him with a medium pacer. Stephen Peters almost followed, but when he was well held by Wright on the boundary, the fielder couldn't keep himself inside the rope and rather than being out, Peters picked up six runs. Whereas Sussex smashed 73 in their first nine overs, Northamptonshire managed only 30 runs and they then lost Kyle Kurtzer, who on five swung across a delivery from Wright and was bowled. Wright was also convinced that he had sails taken down the leg side by Brown. Alas for the Sharks, the umpire did not agree. Northamptonshire knew from the outset that they only needed four and a half runs per over to win for the first time this summer in this competition. And although that rate had now gone up a fraction, Sales and Peters, two very experienced players, knew that they didn't have to take any risks. Sales still went for the odd ball, here pulling Little over the ropes for a maximum. Peters too played within himself against a bowling unit which were putting everything into their deliveries. The spinners, Yardy, Panasar and especially Beer, bowled very tight lines to keep their side in the game in spite of the efforts of these two batsmen. Beer bowling brilliantly, should have had Peters stumped, an opportunity that may have ended up being very costly. But it wasn't. Trying to break free, Peters gave himself room but drove the ex-Northamptonshire player Panasar to Machen in the deep to go for 39 at 88 for 3 in the 23rd over. The excellent tight bowling meant that the home side needed 87 from the last 15 overs at five and a half runs per over. 
and although they still had seven wickets in hand, that was suddenly becoming a tough ask, with Panasar really enjoying his return to his old stomping ground. Sales had just made his 50 off 67 balls when he crucially missed a sweep off beer and was rightly given out LBW at 113 for four in over number 32. Beer then had Middlebrook caught at mid-wicket next ball by Joyce and the Sharks were now on top, probably for the first time since their opening partnership between Joyce and Wright. With 10 overs remaining, the Steelbacks required 71 and with five to go, the rate had gone up to 9.8 runs per over, with 49 still needed. With the spinners now all finished, Beer taking 2 for 21, Yardy 1 for 26 and Panasar 1 for 29 all from 8 overs, Rob White decided he had to throw the bat and twice he picked up deliveries from Lidl and hit them for maximums. With two overs left, Northamptonshire now needed 26 runs but White on a 29 made from a sluggish 47 balls was very well held by Brown running back to catch a swirling high ball. And three deliveries later, Hall swung Little out to Beer to go for 17. Little's last over had gone for just four runs with two wickets to leave North Hans needing 22 off the last. As it was, they could only manage nine to give Sussex a wonderful win. Few would have backed them at the halfway stage and that made the victory all the more sweeter. They are a side which never knows when it's beaten and the 12-run victory here was one of their better ones. It maintains their 100% start to this season's competition and next up for them is a game on Thursday evening at the Probis County Ground against Yorkshire.